peace, gentleness, long-suffering, kindness, meekness. All of those are the ingredients, the mixture that you have to have in order to send up prayers to God. Now, if you got a carnal mixture, your prayers ain't going up to God. But, but we got a little grace now because sometimes we pray cardinal prayer, foolish prayers. Uh, James said you, you pray to consume it upon your lust. Well, God's got some angels up in heaven purifying your prayers. <laughs> he, they're not letting all those crazy words get to God. Amen. They're, they're catching the words that you're praying before they get up to God. And I'm going I'm to give you an illustration in a minute. In a minute. Know that the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. That means that when you repent, you become righteous or right standing with God. So, and his ears are open to your prayers. So the question is, does God hear me pray? Have you repented of your sin? So he hears your prayers. You got to have, you got to take your faith and say, when I open up my mouth to pray, God hears me. The devil's going to come and say, well, God really didn't hear your prayer because he ain't answered your prayer. Look, you didn't pray that and you ain't got no answer. So he ain't hearing you or, or you did this or you did that or, or, you, or, or you did this and you had the wrong attitude and God ain't hearing your prayer. No, he hears the prayers of the righteous, but the ungodly he won't hear. Only prayer he hears from the ungodly is I repent. That's the only thing he's going to hear, want to hear from the ungodly, the, those that are not saved. That's what he wants to hear. I repent and I receive you as Lord and Savior. So he said, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. So know that God's eyes are upon you and his ears are attentive to your prayers. Whether you think they are or not, you've got to have by faith know when you open up your mouth and begin to pray that God hears you. It's not a question that he didn't hear. It's like your mama. You know, when you was a kid, you was upstairs in the back corner, and she was down in the kitchen over there cooking, and you mumming under your breath, and she heard you. <laughs> God hears you very well. He hears you very well. If he can create animals that can hear you five miles away or a bear can smell you five, three to five miles away, if he created that, you think he can't uh, uh, hear you and smell you? In fact, I did a posting this week on Facebook about uh, will you pass the smell test? <laughs> will you pass the smell test? Because the Bible says Jesus is not going to judge according to what he sees or what he hears. So how is he going to judge you? He's going to smell you. See if they're sin on you. How many of sin stinks? It has a smell to it. It don't take much to smell it. You can, tell, you can smell a cigarette smoker. You can tell, smell alcohol. You can smell nicotine. I can smell it like that because I used to do it. So you, you can not smoke for five years. I can still smell that spirit in you if it's still there. He's waiting for you to mess up so he can get you to smoke again until you get delivered. You got to get delivered. So I'm going to bring some light to, this, to the devil. There is a bowl or a cup that God wants to be filled. He said, prepare the table before me in the present minute. You anoint my head with all my brimming cup is running over. In the New Testament, he said, I would that you be filled to excess with the Holy Spirit. I want your cup overflowing. So what's in your prayer cup? I'm going to give you a little illustration this morning. That's the way the Holy Spirit gave it to me, so I'll give it to you the way he gave it to me. Hallelujah. This is your <clears throat> this is your prayer cup of the Spirit and this is your cup of the flesh when you pray. So when you get saved, you learn your prayers. Now I lay me down to sleep, pray to the Lord my soul to keep. Now wait. So we'll put a little incense in your cup because you got a little prayer now. And then you say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He making me lie down in green pastures. So you start praying. And God said, okay, put some more in your cup. Yeah, you got some prayer going, little prayer going. But the more you pray, the more 
goes into your cup. All right? Now, this is a cinnamon touch. So it smells like cinnamon. There's a, there's a smell that's coming out of you. Now, for those that pray, and you say, well, I ain't getting my prayers answered. I've been praying for my husband. I've been praying for my wife. And uh, uh, Lord, I pray. Save this man. Lord, you said me and my house shall be saved, and, 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 and I'm praying for my husband, and he's coming into the kingdom, and I know he's coming in the kingdom, and, and I praise you, Lord, that he's saved. So you put that little prayer in there, and then about two days later, your bald head, I done told you, I'm sick of you doing this. I'm sick of you. I'm tired of praying for you. Guess what God does? Start taking stuff out of your bowl, because you, you said, I'll put this over here in the flesh bowl here, because you didn't, you, didn't, you didn't lost it now. So ain't nothing going to happen over here. And you, and you hear you go year after year after year, constantly giving God, here's my kids, here's my husband, here's my dad. And then you put your mouth on them and, and, and take it out, and you're taking it back out your bowl, and then you're trying to figure out why your prayers are not answered. <laughs> now, okay. Well, I, I know I'm messing up in prayer, so I'm going to run over to Apostle Rosa and ask her to pray. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So you go to Pastor Rosa, Pastor Rosa pray, and then you really, oh, God, God, God didn't fill my cup. Now he started answering my prayers. But you're not praying. You got to pray. And so the Apostle calls corporate prayer. So then you come to corporate prayer. So you get a little prayer in, you get a little prayer time in, you start praying, and we start pouring a little bit more in your bowl. But then you just stop praying. You don't pray the rest of the week. And you're still looking for the answer to your prayer. Now remember now, he said, Cornelius, he said, your prayer is heard, and your arms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. So remember, I told you God sees what you're doing. He hears what you're doing. Now, if you go to Thailand and you go to some of these other nations, the priests, the, the, the monks, the Buddhist monks, they walk around with a bowl. And that's their alms bowl. They walk around and people put rice or, or money in their bowl to sustain them. He said, Cornelius, you've been praying and you've been giving offerings and now I've seen your offerings and your, your bowl is full. So now I'm coming to answer your prayers. And so he begins to pour in more, more, and as you begin to pray more. But if you start praying in the flesh, more stuff starts coming out of your bowl. You say, well, why ain't that prayer being answered? I'm, I, I've been praying. The pastor said I pray. I, I should pray. But see, we get in the flesh. We don't use faith. We pray. And he say, well, but the Bible says not See, ask, keep on praying, keep on knocking. Let me just go on a little bit. In Isaiah 59, 6, he said, He saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought salvation to him, and his righteousness is sustained him. Now, it's one thing to be praying for your children and pray for your husband and, and pray for your job and, and pray that you get a husband and, and pray that you get rid of a husband or pray you get rid of a wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll go there. You'll go there. Lord, if you don't do something, I'm going to kill him. Lord, if you don't do something, that just, that just blocked the prayer. So the next level of praying is not about you. The next level of praying is about someone else. You become the inter an intercessor, someone that prays for somebody else's issues, someone else's problems. If you read Isaiah 58, he said, now, if you pray for somebody else's problem and somebody else's issue, I'm going to answer your problem. While you're busy trying to help someone over here, I'm going to go over to your house and deal with your crazy Uncle Louie, Louis, your drunk Uncle Bubba. I'm going to deal with them, or smoking uh, uh, prostitute Paula or whoever. He said, I'm going to deal with them while you're dealing with some, you, you're giving your, helping someone else over here or interceding for them and praying for them. So Jesus said, I, didn't find, I couldn't find an intercessor because everybody wants, wants a little prayer, but they don't want to really intercede. When you intercede, you start filling your cup because 
prayer, it starts going up and you start getting, it starts getting a little bit higher and a little bit higher as you pray and intercede. But if you don't have a prayer life, there's nothing going in your cup. What's in your cup? If this is all you're going to do, you might as well get some milk and have some cereal. Because <laughs> it ain't going nowhere. Now, there are apostolic levels of prayer. In Acts 2, 42 and 43, said they continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. That's why corporate prayer is so important because the prayers that are, that are being released now are authority prayers. The position that we are now in the body of Christ as individuals to become speakers of his word and, and authority in his word and become governmental people of his word and God's going to begin to change situations in the earth realm and in your job and in your environment as you begin to pray and speak his word. It's no longer just going to be the apostles doing it or the pastor doing it. You've got to learn how to do it. You've got to learn how to pray. You've got to learn how to fight for yourself. You got to know how to put on the armor of God. You know how to go to put on the helmet of salvation, the best pair of righteousness. I've had many times where people have come to me and pray and wanted me to pray for their marriage and pray for the, and, and, and pray for them. The Lord said, no, tell them to pray for himself. I said, I can't. I said, brother, you know, you used to be trying to pray. The Lord said, no. You said, you need to learn. He said, if I keep casting out the devil and I keep doing it, then you're never going to learn how to do it yourself. So I had to step back. You got to learn how to step back sometimes and not try to let people wear you out with prayer. Because some of you are wear us out in prayer. Because you just get, I just run up and get prayer because you, can, you talk to God. But you got to talk to God yourself. The curtain is split. Go in there and talk to him yourself. He's your daddy too. You're not a stepchild. You're not adopted. Hey man, you're engrafted in, but you're not a stepchild. You can go talk to him for yourself. But he said their prayers said fear came upon every soul and many signs and wonders were done by the apostles. Why is it because of prayer? We got to get into that place of, of fervent prayer, effectual prayer, in order for God to do what He wants to do. Revival has to hit America. We need a revival in Chicago. Can you imagine if we just get together in one accord, in one mind, and watch revival begin to take out in America, in Chicago? Some people are committed to prayer. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be sad because you're not up to the level where somebody else is or where I am. Uh, you know, I had to learn. Like everybody else, you just don't be walk in the door and you just a prayer warrior. You come to corporate prayer and you hear and you hear other people pray and you start learning the word and you start speaking the word and you grow and you grow and you grow and you become strong. In Luke 2, 36, it says, and there was Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and she had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about four score and four years. Now she was a widow of 84 years and was with her husband seven years from her virginity. So she was up there. She was in the, close to 90. And she was a widow of about four score years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. That was her ministry. That's all she did was fast and pray to see the bowl get full to a tipping point. Don't say how long she prayed, how many years she prayed, but she was praying night and day. And, in, and when she was coming, in that instant gave thanks lives unto the Lord and spake unto them all that look for the redemption of Jesus. She came she saw the Christ child, and she said, now I can go. Now, now my job is done. Now redemption has come. She was in a place of just prayer. She was a prayer warrior. That's intercessor. That's someone that prays. God, in, in years to come, God may take some of you and tell you, I want you to go to Cincinnati. What, for what, Lord? Just go. And you get on the plane, go to Cincinnati. He said, I want you to just go pray, go downtown and walk the street and just pray. Just do it. That's what he's doing. Just go walk and pray. When we that one trip, we went to uh, Zambia and we went to Kenya. Went to Kenya first, and then we got on to get ready to take off, go to Zambia after we've been in Kenya for a week. And they went on strike. I was on the airplane. The pilot 
rev the engines, rev the right, left, turned around, took it back to the, to the, to the terminal and said, we're on strike. I said, Lord, why you do this to us? So we had, they put us in a hotel, the Hyatt, the Hilton Hotel, put us up on the 20-something floor, and the Lord said, I, I, I want you here because I want you to pray for this city of Nairobi. So you call all the saints together. I had a team of seven of us, and we began to intercede for that nation of, of Kenya. Gave us steak, ate the best food, nice room, sweets, gave us a nice big suite, and we just enjoyed ourselves. Prayed and rested, and the next morning they, they came and got us and took us, put us on the plane. So in Hebrews, the Bible says that Jesus, notice that there's a smoke, which is your prayers that come up out of the, your bowl. It's a smell. It's an incense to God. So, so also Christ glorified not himself that he made himself a high priest, but that said unto him, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. As he is also in another place, thou art a priest after the order of Melchizedek, whom in the days of his flesh, when he offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard that he feared, in that he feared. Though he were a son, he learned obedience by the things he suffered. And perfect <clears throat> author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Called of God, a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. The Bible says Jesus went in the garden, he prayed with tears, sweats of blood. The, the, the torment on him was so heavy. The weight was so heavy. The, 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 the knowing that he was going to be killed, he was going to be crucified, was so heavy that he literally swapped blood, came out of his forehead. He was in so much travail, so much tears, so much pain. And sometimes you get in the vein of intercession and, and begin to weep and get a burden for certain things. God takes, how I many know God takes all your tears and put them in a bottle? Psalms 56 and, and, and 8 says, You number and record my wanderings. Put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? So when, you, so, so when you're going through problems and you're going through trials and you're going through tests and you're going through persecution and, and, and sometimes it hurts and sometimes you start crying and, and you start weeping, God said, I take every one of your tears. And I'm putting them in the bottle. I'm saving them. I'm saving them for you. Because he said in Revelation, he said, I'm going to wipe away all your tears. I'm going to erase everything. It's going to be like a dream gone by. You're not going to remember what you went through. You're going to be so full of joy and so happy this year that you didn't even know that you went through what you went through. Or we went through these last it's going to be like a dream going by, y'all. I can't wait either. It's coming real. It is real cold. I can taste it. It's, it's here. And when it happens, all things going to pass away. All things will become new. My old way of thinking, my old way of talking, my old way of walking, my old way of looking, my old way of driving, my, I'm, all of that's going to go. Because I didn't pray, and my bowl is full. So remember now, your tears are in the bottle. So don't worry about your tears. He sees all your pain. The Bible says he was touched with the feelings of our infirmity, yet without sin, in Hebrews. So in Romans 1, verse 9, it says, Now, for God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. You've got to, somebody got, I hope y'all praying for me every day. I pray that you're making mention of me. I'm mentioning you. Amen. Call my name out. Put it up there in front of me. Amen. I've had people call me and say, I've been praying for you. Are you on your trip? Lord, let me be praying for you. I said, thank you for praying because I was so getting beat up. Make requests, making requests, if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come to you. Paul said, uh, he said, your prayers, when you pray for somebody, it stops the enemy from hindering me to come. To come. I, I want to come, but the, the enemy has hindered me. The enemy is fighting me. 
<coughs> he said, For I long to see you, that I might impart unto you some spiritual gift, at the end you may be established. This is why your prayers are so important, and my prayers are so important. When I went to India, it wasn't about me. It was about the strength of the Lord. I was weak. My voice was gone. I'm full of cold. And, 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 but God want, knew that the anointing that he placed in me, I needed to impart it to these pastors to establish them in the ministry because the anointing that is on me is duplicable. The anointing on me, what I've been able to do, they will be able to do what I have to go to college. They will be able to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. They will lay hands on blind eyes and, and, and see the eyes open. They will lay hands on the cripple and see the cripple get up. They will preach the gospel like they never preached before because the spirit that's on me has been placed on them. The same principle when, God, when Moses was dealing with all the people, day after day after day, they were coming to him with all the issues. Uh, Isabel stole my drawers off the line, and, and Iqbal got my sheep, and, and all of this stuff, all this stuff he was dealing with every day. <laughs> well, that's what he was dealing with, stupid stuff. Y'all know how y'all with your neighbors, stupid stuff. Oh, you park your car in the driveway, and, I, and you messed up there. Just... Why you push the snow over on my sidewalk? And that's what he was dealing with, silly stuff. And his father-in-law came and said, wait, man, you're going to kill yourself dealing with these crazy folks. He said, find 70 elders and put your spirit on them and let them judge. And the heavier matters you judge, but the, the other things that other, other people can judge, you let them judge it. So it's important. Paul said, my little children, of whom I travailed in birth again, to Christ be formed in you. Here's what happened. You say, well, I've been praying for my child, and I've been praying for my husband, and they still ain't right. Well, you got to keep praying for them until Christ is formed in them. Just because they get saved don't mean Jesus is formed in them. They still got a cussing spirit in their mouth, amen? They still got some ugly attitudes in their way. They still leave their drawers in the floor. They still, and, and just all kind of crazy stuff that you've been praying for. You got to keep praying. <laughs> I'm trying to set y'all free now. Because that what stops prayer right there. Even though you're praying for him, but he's still leaving his drawers in the floor, won't pick up stuff in the bathroom, and you're around the house fussing and fussing and fussing, and all of your little prayers you've been praying going into the, the cardinal cup. <laughs> oh, it's going to be some quiet folks this week. I know y'all going to shut your mouth. And you're trying to figure out why my prayers ain't getting answered. Well, you done cussed out everybody and, then, and did everything all week long and just picking and pushing and I'm sick of y'all. And I'm like, oh, it's fire in the house. And all kind of stuff. <laughs> and you think you've got an incense going up to God. It's stinking his nose. Now, if it's getting on everybody's no nerve in the house, how do you think God feels? <laughs> I told you God was going to help you this morning. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 1, verse 2 and 3, he said, Now, we give thanks to God always for you, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labor of love, patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God our Father. So are, are you praying for your brother and praying for your sister or praying for other, everybody else in the church because of their, their faithfulness or their labor of love, that they're, they're cleaning the church, they're doing it? Pray for that. Pray. The patience. Patiently waiting. Been single all these years and it's still waiting. <laughs> 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 you got to help them. You got to pray. <coughs> that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. <coughs> well. Wow. 
Paul said in 1 Timothy 2, verse 1 and 2, he said, I was what? That first of all, first, first of all supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving the thanks to be made for all men. Here's four categories. Supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks. You got to do all of them. Lord, I've sent my supplication. Your word says, give us this day our daily bread. And I come for you. I thank you for my daily bread today. And I pray for sister so-and-so that you supply. She's got five children. And I pray that you supply all of her needs according to your riches. And Lord, I just stand in the gap for a husband that have left them. And I pray, Lord, that you turn them around. And you just start interceding. And I give thanks, Lord, that you hear my prayers and that you're answering them. And we thank you, Lord, for the answer that is coming so speedily and quickly that you're going to save their household and everything else. So you start, you got to do all that. Not about you. It's about somebody else. You keep focusing on you, you your prayers ain't ever get, get answered. When you start focusing on someone else, God starts dealing with you, start answering your prayers. Let's go a little further. Your prayers stop the enemy. I don't know how many times I've heard demons speak out of people and say, I would have killed them, but somebody was praying for them. And mama's prayers was blocking me. I wanted to kill them, but I couldn't kill them because they kept praying for them. Grandmama kept praying for them. Remember the story in, in, in uh, Numbers uh, 16 where Moses, uh, where the Cosby and the, uh, 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 brought this prostitute through the camp. God was breaking out on Israel. He was, the, 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 the fire of God was killing folks. And here come Cosby and, and what you call it with a, girl, with a prostitute in the camp while God's rebuking Israel. And uh, uh, God started breaking out on Israel. And in verse 47, Aaron took Moses' command and ran in the midst of the And behold, the plague which was begun among the people, he put, a, he put on incense and made atonement for the people, and he stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was stayed. That prayer or the incense stopped the rest of the uh, congregation being killed. Your prayers will stop the enemy from killing people. Your prayers and intercession, Lord, protect them as they go on their traveling. Give them traveling mercies. Let them return safely. Lord, don't let the car have an accident, uh, especially now in the wintertime. You know, got all these chain reaction, car reaction. It's crazy to be out there. The best way to stay out of an accident, don't even get out there. If it's snowing, don't even go. I don't know why they tell people, oh, a storm's coming. Well, I'm going to drive. <laughs> crazy. I ain't going out there. There is a power of intercession. In Job 33, if you read, you go back up and read. It's talking about, Job is talking about a man that about to die. He's languishing in his bed. He's sick. He's got bone cancer. He's got all kind of cancer in his body. He's pining away. And in, in uh, verse 22, he says, yeah. This thing keeps acting stupid. I have to use the handheld, I guess. It says, uh, yeah, his soul draweth near the grave, and his life the destroyers. If there be a messenger, a messenger is an, an intercessor, someone that would stand in the gap with him, an interpreter. He don't know God, but you know God. If you would stand in the gap for him, one among a thousand, to show this man his uprightness, then God is gracious to him and said, deliver him from going down to the pit. I found a ransom. I found someone to take up the head to stand in the gap. His flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. He shall pray to God, and he will be favor unto him, and he shall see his face with joy, and he will render unto man his righteousness. God said, if I can just find somebody to stand in the gap, Someone to come and pray and intercede for the lost. Someone to pray for these young men in Chicago that are being killed and shot. Someone to pray for these young men in jail. Someone that will stand in the gap. If I can find someone, uh, someone that's going on, got AIDS or someone that's got some kind of disease and now they got a new one, Zyba or Zilba, whatever kind of Zika, whatever kind of disease that's coming through. If I can find an intercessor that knows me and pray for them, he said, I'll recover them. Heaven, the power of heaven, you know what holds the power of heaven up? Our prayers. 
Heaven's in the third heaven. And it's, up, it's held up by the prayers of the saints going up to the earth realm. Jesus gets more power when we pray. When we pray, the Bible says your prayers return to your bosom. Your prayers go up. God hears them, filters them, purifies them, and then they come back down to you in answer. But if you're not sending any prayers up, there ain't no prayers coming down. You got to send some prayers up. And you got to pray the word. We go, we'll look at this in a minute. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now you said, ask, it shall be given you. Seek, and you might find it. Knock, and it might get open for you. For everyone that asks, asketh, receiveth. The, the, the TH on the back of it means it's continually. So when you ask, you've already received it. You got to learn how to receive what you ask for because you're asking of your righteousness and you're asking according to his word, he has to answer you. The problem is many of us pray and we don't wait for the answer. Lord, bless me, us three, us four, and no more. Thank you today. Bye. <laughs> or while we're driving in the car on our way to work, Lord, let me have a good day. Thank you. Hmm. Oh, Lord, I thank you for this day. Angels protect me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And I pray the blessings of the Lord on my day and that everything's going to go well. And, Lord, I just love you. Kisses. Bye. And Jesus, wait, wait, wait. I want to tell, tell you that I want you to talk to Lucy when you get to work, and I want you to tell her that I love you. But, but, and you gone. Pew. <laughs> I mean, oh, God will give you assignment for the day if you're asking. There are certain things in the day that when you get up and pray, you say, Lord, what do you want me to get done today? What do I need to accomplish today? You say, I want you to, I want you to uh, bake some cupcakes and take them over to Sarah. That's all I want you to do today. If you don't do anything, else, you, the rest of the day is yours. Just do whatever you want. You hear me? He'll, he'll, he'll get, anything else you do is just extra. But some things that God may want you to do, uh, sometimes he say, just, I just want you to rest today. Don't do anything today. Thank you, Jesus. I love my pillow. Just go rest. <laughs> or, or, you know, sometimes he wants you to get something done. The Bible says we're to redeem time. So everyone that asks receives it. He that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. So how many times do I do it? You keep knocking until it opens. You keep asking until you get, the, you get it. You keep seeking until you find it. You keep going and know that he heard your prayers. And a lot of times he opens up the way for you. Now, your prayers are getting full and you're praying. And you've been praying, and you've been wondering why haven't my prayers been answered? Some of your prayers and some of your praying are not going to be answered until the end time. There are certain things that God is reserving. For the end time, and we're in the end time. Your prayers are not wasted. They're not lost. Everything that you pray is recorded. The Bible says, and I think it's in Isaiah, he said, uh, either Isaiah or Ezekiel, he said, he told the angel, he said, go down and mark those that cry day and night for my judgment and my righteousness. Put them in the book of remembrance. God remembers everything you pray. You don't remember everything you pray. But God remembers everything you pray. Lord, if you save me, I'll do whatever you want me to do. 
And then 15 years later, God said, I want you to serve me. I want you to be a minister. Who, me? Not me. I can't be no minister. I can't get up there and say, not me. No, no. Yeah, but you did, didn't you just say when you was in your desperate situation that you do anything? But now you didn't change your mind. He remembers all your prayers. You remember when you said, would you head your head over the toilet, calling them Buicks? I'll never do that again, Lord, if you get me out of this one more time. <laughs> Look at Revelation 5. <coughs> he said, Lo, behold, he said, and behold, lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into the earth. And he came and he took the book out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne. This is Jesus. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps, golden vials full of odors or smells, which are the prayers of the saints. All of your prayers are being collected by the twenty-four elders in heaven. And, and they and processing. And, 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 and they, they filter your prayers through the word of God. So any fleshly words that try to go through, don't go through. Only his word goes through. You got to learn to pray his word, not your emotions. Speak his word. Is there, the Bible says, is not his word in uh, <clears throat> Jeremiah 29? It said, is not my word like fire? Saith the Lord like a hammer that breaks the rocks in pieces. So his word huh, is the fire that causes your prayers to be as incense. See, it takes fire for smoke to go up. Jeremiah said, it's like fire shut up in my bones. The fire is the fire of the Holy Ghost in you when you speak God's word the fire of the Holy Ghost gets on God's word and it goes up as smoke into the nostrils of God as prayers. God smells it and says, hey, that smells good. That's a good sacrifice. And so the 24 elders take your prayers and they put all your prayers in a censer and they're walking around. Now remember now in the old tabernacle, the, the type and shadow of the old tabernacle, I showed you there's one in heaven just like it. There was an altar showbread. There's an altar of uh, sacrifice. There's a candlestick holder. All of those were type and shadow, but the, the rep they're replicas of the master that's in heaven. The Bible says when Jesus died, he told Mary, don't touch me. I have not resurrected yet. I have not ascended yet. The Bible says he, he took his blood that was shed in the earth. He took the blood and went up into heaven, and on the altar of sacrifice, he sprinkled his blood on all the equipment in that tabernacle. The holy place, the, the candlestick, all of that in heaven, he covered it all in the blood of Jesus. He said, it's, good, it's done now. God sees you through the blood. When you pray, when you, when you read his word, or when you eat the bread of the word of God, when you come into the holy place, he sees you through the blood. The blood covers everything. His blood is purified. So you can go boldly through the throne of grace and know that when you open up your mouth and pray, he hears you. In fact, there are two angels assigned to you. The Bible says one goes back and forth to heaven reporting what you're doing on earth. <laughs> yeah, he's telling the Lord, yeah, they're over there paying bid with eating chips. They ain't doing nothing. They ain't praying. They ain't doing nothing. <laughs> Yeah, they're reporting on you. Jesus, they're, they're sneaking, they're tipping, they're dipping. They think they're getting away with stuff. And guess what? You know what Jesus is doing? Ever making intercession on your behalf. He praying for you. The Bible says he ever lived to make intercession for you and me. He's praying for you and me. That's his job is to pray for you and me. See, that's why I'm wearing. You may not pray for me, but I know Jesus is praying for me. 
He's, he's interceding for you and me. So don't think that you're not getting prayers. Jesus is praying that Christ be formed in you, that he be formed in you, and that you will mature and grow in the things of the kingdom of God. All of your prayers are saved. The beast with many eyes, the lamb, the dove, all of the angels, they got all your stuff. All your stuff is being saved up. Y'all, you're not losing anything. See, don't let the devil tell you, well, your prayer, you just praying, and, and God ain't answered your prayer. Sometimes it ain't time for your prayer to be answered. Lord, I need a man. And God keeps saying, uh, you need to learn to cook first before you, you can't even wash clothes and cook at the same time. I've seen some ladies that can't, they can't put a load of clothes in and turn the stove on at the same time. They got to sit there and wash, wipe for the clothes to wash and then dry them and then go up and go cook. Look, you got to be able to do multitask. You got to be in five hands. You got to be able to do that and vacuum at the same time while you're doing all that stuff. What's the matter with y'all? <laughs> you better get some household skills. <laughs> You better learn how to iron. You know how to iron? <laughs> hey, man, I, gotta, I might have to go back to iron, man. I just took some stuff to the cleaner. $50. I said, what, $50? Give me some starch. <laughs> hey, I had to iron my stuff. Shoot. I iron a whole week's worth of stuff. My mama said, y'all better get in a whole iron. You better iron your stuff on Friday and Saturday and be ready for school because you had. A, I want you five outfits for Five days of school, you better have something ready, laid out. And in my house, it was six, it was eight of us, ten of us. So you had to take turns to use the ironing board and iron. That, that poor iron be going all day. All day. You ain't through with the iron yet? Hell, I'm going to be through in a little while. So your prayers are safe. There's an altar in heaven. Look at it, Revelation 8, 2. He said, I saw seven angels that stood before God, and then were given seven trumpets. Now, some of the trumpets are blown already. People are hearing about, hearing the sound of trumpets all over the earth right now. They said, where's that sound coming? They, came, they don't know where the sound comes. They just hear a horn blowing. He said, another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of the saints. Upon the golden altar that's before the throne. So there's an altar. Remember I told you there's an altar in heaven. So your prayers, along with the incense of heaven, are being mixed, are going to be mixed. Look at verse 4. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer, filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth and there were voices, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. Judgment. So don't think that you're wasting time when we're praying against these wicked politicians and wicked corrupt uh, bankers and, and wicked. Those prayers are going up. And when the cup gets full, God's going to pour it out. So don't think that that's why the devil hates prayer. That's why he fights so hard against prayer. Because he don't really know we have the revelation now that, hey, we are effective whether we think so or not. We don't know what's going on in the spirit realm when we pray. But I'm showing you now what's happening in the spirit realm. Your prayers are going up to God, and the angels are taking your prayers because if they're the word of God and you're praying the word of God and they're mixing your prayers with the incense off the altar of heaven, and God is smelling it and he's sending judgment into the earth realm. He smells your prayers. He says, send them an answer. He said, Cornelius, your prayers have come up before me. Now it's time for you to get blessed. So don't stop praying because you don't know when your cup is going to be filled to overflowing. When it starts overflowing, answers start coming. Stuff you prayed for 20 years ago starts coming to pass. I've got prophetic words that I got 25 years ago still have not come to pass, and some of them are just now starting to come to pass. Words that were spoken 20, 30 years ago are still not, have, have not come to pass. Am I discouraged? No, 
because I know they're going to come to pass because when I pray, I receive it when I ask for it. I believe it and I receive it. Whatever. It, it don't matter. I, I, it don't matter what the devil does. It don't matter how hard he tries. I'm still a millionaire. I don't care what it is. I may have a cash flow problem right now, but sooner or later, I'm going to be walking in, them, I'm gonna be walking in my stuff. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And I'm going to beat all of y'all running around this church. Ain't nobody going to be out to run me. Shoo. I'll be looking like the whirlwind running around here. It's coming. But your prayers and revelation. Now here, Paul said in Ephesians, he said, I'm going to pray this prayer. And, this, and, and some of you need to get this, and you need to write it down, and you need to memorize it. And you need to pray it. First Ephesians 1.15. For this reason, because I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love toward the saints, uh, the people of God, I do not cease giving thanks for you and mention of you in my prayers. For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. This is what I'm praying that he may grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation of insight into the mysteries and secrets of the word and into the deep and intimate knowledge of him. He said, I pray that by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light so you can understand the hope which he has called you, how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints, his set-apart ones, and so that you will, can know and understand what is the immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe, as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength. You don't know how much power is in you because you ain't smit the mantle yet. You got to smite the water. You got to lay hands on the sick. You got to speak the word. You got to lay hands on cast and watch blind eyes open up. It's in you already. You don't know. It's so immeasurable. You haven't even tapped into it. So Paul said, I'm praying that you get a revelation of this, that you understand that the same anointing that raised Jesus from the dead is in you. The same power that he used to heal the sick is in you. The same wisdom and words of knowledge and words of knowledge is in you. He said, I pray that you get understanding and you begin to exercise yourself in this and know that you can hear his voice and know it, when you start understanding and hearing him in prayer and stop running and start listening in prayer, he'll start giving you strategies on what the enemy is trying to do to you or the enemy is trying to set you up for and you can block it. You can block it. He's given us that wisdom. He gave several prophets the wisdom about uh, uh, Osama bin Laden, where he was, where he was hiding. In fact, uh, one of the prophets, uh, uh, I was listening to a Dutch uh, Friday night, he was telling that the Lord told him to go, and, and he began to prophesy. They had a service, and they began to call it, fight against, uh, pray against ISIS, and pray against Osama bin Laden. And God said, just pray. He was teaching. The Lord said, stop, just pray. And he started praying. And there happened to be a soldier there, a guy in uniform, and they laying hands on him as a proxy. And he said, Lord, give these soldiers wisdom and give them understanding uh, 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 where he is and how to capture him and let them be anointed to capture him. And he said, two weeks later, he turned on the TV and they said they had captured Osama bin Laden, and he said, guess what unit captured him? It was the unit of the young man they had laid hands on by faith. It was his unit that captured Osama bin Laden. They didn't know. They just did it by faith. They didn't know it was the boy's unit. They just, Lord said, pray, and they laid hands on him and said, Lord, we just pray that you get these soldiers wisdom, and they didn't know it was his unit that captured Osama bin Laden. That was, it had to be God. So how important our prayers are and prophetic praying is going to be in this hour that we'll be just demonstrate and do what God tells us to do as we, we come together and things are going to begin to break. So 
Verse 20, which he exerted in Christ, he raised him from the dead, seated him right on the right hand in the heavenly places. So know that you're, you're sitting in heavenly places. Ephesians 121, far above all rule, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, every title that can be conferred. I don't care if he's senator, House of Representatives. I don't care if he's a Supreme Court judge. I don't care if he's the president of the United States. You still have authority over him. Not only in this age, but in the world, but also in the age in the world that are which to come. Far above rule, power, authority, and dominion. It's in you. He's releasing it to us. That's why I go into the nations. When I go into the nations, I'm in authority. I don't care what the, who, the, who the strong man is. I don't care what the principality is. I am seated in Christ Jesus above that principality. He sent me on assignment as an ambassador of the kingdom of heaven, and I have authority wherever I go. And I don't care how much the devil raves. I don't care how much he rants. He's going to do what I say do. That's why Paul turned cities upside down, because he knew he had authority. In fact, Amos... The prophet Amaziah came to Amos and said, you, you stay over there in Judah and prophesy over there because your words are too heavy for our kingdom. Go on away from here because you're too powerful. Your words in this hour are going to have a lot of weight. How many have been praying prayers and you start to see quick answers? Quick answers. I mean, it's like you pray today and tomorrow. Oh, yeah. It, it too shall pass. You're going to be okay. It, this, it's all right. But while you're in the moment, it's like, ah, 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 And then somebody else is praying. I said, just be clean. God got you. What's in your prayer bowl? Now I lay me down to sleep, Sesame Street prayers. Have you graduated and come a little bit more, a little bit higher? There are plenty of books on prayer. John Eckers got books on routing demons, prayer books. There's, there's prayer books on the... Uh, different prayer books, <laughs> prayers that avail of much. They got prayers that you can just put somebody's name in and just, just say the prayer. <laughs> That's how you learn. No, I got some tea here. Thank you. I'm done anyway. I think my voice is about ready to get through. Hallelujah. Made it through. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Did you get something out of that? <laughs> Don't pray fleshly prayers. Don't fuss and argue, and just, it blocks. And I didn't even read the scripture about husbands and wives when you get in an argument that your prayers are being hindered. If two or three will touch and agree on anything, any business, any matter, any concern, if I can just get you to touch and agree, the Bible says God will do it or create it or be a wall of flame around your agreement until it is created. I want to own my own dance studio. Okay, I'll come in agreement with you. And we're going to be in agreement until the thing's manifested. Whatever your heart's desire, you need somebody to touch and agree with faith. Now, I don't want nobody to touch and agree when you ain't got no faith. Keep your, don't, don't come to my hospital room talking about praying for me. Don't come in my door crying and boo-hooing, oh, pastor, get away from me. I'll pull them needles out of my arm and slap you. Don't come in there crying. <laughs> don't come in there with all that mess. Put them out like Jesus did. Get out of here. Better come in with some praise tapes on or some worship music or something, or speak or something, or some shouting. Amen? Praise God. Well, I'm done. Anybody want some cinnamon toast crunch? <laughs> Got some almond milk here? But know that your prayers, don't be subtracting from your bowl. Keep your mouth shut. Because the devil always wants you to say something negative about what you've already prayed about. Oh, it ain't going to happen. They ain't going to call you. They ain't nothing going to do it. You're not going to get that promotion. You're all that kind of crazy stuff. No, I'm going to have what I say when I pray. 
Even if God's got to move a heathen out of my way to get what I need to get, I'm going to get what I got to get. I don't care who's on the job. They're going to create a position for me if there's not a position in it because that's what I want. I, when I pray, that's what I believe, Lord, and you're going to give it to me. Amen? Because I'm a king's kid, so I deserve the best. I deserve what I want, and I want it now. Amen? Praise God. Father, I thank you this morning for the revelation of prayer. The Lord, that we, as our prayers are going up as incense before your nostrils, that you're saving them, that our tears are being put in a bottle, and that every word that is coming out of our mouth, and it's the word of God, is like fire, and is mixing with the incense of heaven, and is being a sweet incense, a sweet smell in your nostrils, and you're answering prayer, and our prayers are returning to our bosom. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, that you're exposing, expose, and in fact, we decree and declare that Donald Trump will not be president. And we decree and declare that, that uh, Clinton will not be president. Amen. Father, we decree and declare that Bernie Sanders ain't going to be president. Father, put in your man. We, we decree, Father, arrest him, trip him up, let him fall down, but don't let him get in the office in the name of Jesus. Father, we, uh, we lock the door on Trump. Lord, we lock it. He, can, he can't have that seat in the name of Jesus. We can't have that narcissist spirit, that wicked spirit that caused civil war. We don't want it in our nation. And so, Father, we decree it, and we pray it, and we send our prayers up, Lord. Sit your man in, Lord. Someone that has a righteous heart for the kingdom of God. Someone that has a, a righteous heart that will turn this nation back to God. Father, raise up a dark horse. Raise up somebody else. Hallelujah. That, that, that has a heart that you'll use in this end time that is saved, and I want to serve you, Lord. We give you praise for that. We thank you that you expose every ISIS cell in America, every terrorist cell, every terrorist group. Let them be exposed. Show them, Lord. Let the police catch them. Let the military catch them. Let the CIA catch them. FBI, Lord, the Homeland Security. Let them be aware of every terrorist. Let them, let them be trapped in their own trap. Lord, let them be caught in their own scheme and their own problem. Let their bombs blow up in their face in the name of Jesus. We pray the name of the Lord. We pray, Lord, that the blessings of the Lord make us rich and has no sorrow. So we thank you for the release of our money now. We want it this week. We want our money now. We want the breakthrough now. We come in agreement now. You say we can ask what we, when we want to pray. So we think that every need is met, every bill is paid, everything's paid off, and that we're moving into the next dimension of prosperity and blessings. So we receive it. Even today, we receive the blessing. Father, we will not let it go until you manifest it in the earth. And so, Father, we thank you for the manifestation this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, bless you. Anybody need prayer? We'll pray with you. Uh, Tuesday night. I think it's, is it snowing out there? Yeah, it's supposed to snow. So, uh, but it's supposed to turn 40 by Friday, so. Hallelujah. So just a few more days. Hug on somebody. Love on somebody. Bless you. We'll be see you here Tuesday night. Next week, bring a special love offering. We're going to do a missions offering. I'll do it next week. And uh, we want to get that money together so I get in the next trip. Amen. Bless you. <laughs>